welcome you this first Sunday of 2022. That's hard to imagine, but we welcome you worshiping with us in the various places where you are. We hope the, the Lord is good to you throughout this coming new year and that you will find his richest blessings in all the things uh, that you face throughout this coming year. At this time, we will begin our worship. Our call to worship this morning is from the Psalms, the 111th Psalm, verses 1 and 2. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in him. The hymn of praise is number 151, the first Noel. Would you bow with me for the invocation and then join me praying the Lord's Prayer. Lord, you have come among us as one of us. You have shared our condition so you know our needs, our desires, our fears. Help us recognize your presence with us, in us, and in others around us. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The epistle lesson is from Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. 
just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, you have brought us through this Christmas season. We have celebrated the wonders of your love in the giving of your Son, Jesus, to be with us here in this world. We thank you for the blessings that you have poured out upon us. We thank you for your presence and for a love so great that you were willing to share human flesh, that you were willing to share the trials and tribulations and sufferings of life in this world, that you were willing to be among us, that we might come to know you. We pray that you will be with us throughout this coming new year. You have blessed us in the past year. We have met many obstacles and, and many trials and tribulations, and by the presence of of your Holy Spirit and the strength of your mighty arm, you have brought us through those things. We pray that in the coming year, you will continue to strengthen and guide us, that whatever comes, whatever we have to face, you will continue to bless us and guide us and strengthen us, and we will find great joy in your presence. We pray this day for those who have lost loved ones, who have been grieving during this season of people getting together, families gathering together. Surround them with your love and strengthen them for the days ahead and open their eyes to the promise of eternal life. We pray this day for those who are sick. We ask that your healing touch will be upon them in accordance with your will. We pray that you will use us also as instruments of your grace that we might share with them whatever we can to help them in their trials and tribulations. Bless those who are walking in darkness that their eyes might be open to see your light. Help all of us as we go through life to, to look unto you and to find hope in the midst of despair and light in the midst of darkness, we pray that your love will so transform our hearts that we cannot help but share that love with others around us so that in the coming year that love will reach from us, from you to us and through us to others and that all will glorify you and have their lives transformed into the kinds of people you want us to be. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will be with the church in this place and your church throughout our state and nation and world. 
Help us to be faithful in the calling that you have given to us and faithful to the mission that you have entrusted to us. Help us to bear witness to the whole world of your love and saving power. For indeed, as the angels announced, this is good news which is for all people. We pray that you will be with our nation and all nations, that you will be with the world as a whole, that you will touch one heart after another, and that your love will be contagious and that it will spread everywhere, and that we will begin to, to look out for one another, that we will turn away from selfishness, that we will turn away from greed, that we will turn toward you and toward one another and lift one another up. May that day come when all nations acknowledge one another as children of God. We pray that the day comes when all people will be able to dwell together in peace. And now, Lord, we thank you for your holy word. We pray that you will grant us insight and understanding and guidance that we might live according to your will. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture text for this morning comes from John's Gospel, the first chapter beginning in the 10th verse and going through the 18th verse. Listen for the word of the Lord. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Here ends the reading from God's holy word. May he add his blessings to our understanding of it. Let us pray. And now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For you are our redeemer and our strength. Amen. All too quickly, Christmas has come and gone. Families have gathered. Presents have been given. Children have had great delight. Parents and grandparents also have been filled with joy in seeing the children's joy and in sharing one with another. People have feasted around tables that are filled and have been filled with good things. It seemed to come quickly, and it went even more quickly. There are those who feel that there is kind of a letdown that Christmas has come and gone as it has. They perhaps were anticipating something that they did not receive. Perhaps they, like 
Many of us as children felt that they wanted Christmas as it was to go on and on. I know as a child I could hardly wait for Christmas to come. And then I hated to see it go. And when the Christmas tree came down, it was very sad to me to see it go down because I knew then that Christmas was over and that it would be almost an eternity before the next Christmas came. And there are those who find that Christmas is not full of joy. It is full of negative things for them because things just did not work out the way they wanted them to. Sometimes Christmas is full of grief because they remember the times when loved ones were near who are no longer with them. There are times of sorrow, times of disappointment, times of letdown. But the spirit of Christmas is such that even with all the negatives that there are, there is much positive over which we can celebrate. Our good Lord knew that. He did not promise that Christmas or any other time in our lives would be just perfect. Sometimes we think for a thing to be as it should be, it must be perfect. But if we were dependent on Christmas being perfect for everyone, if we were dependent on ourselves being perfect, we would always be disappointed. But our Lord and our scripture for this day gives us good and positive news that does not overlook the negative. The scripture is, is very sincere and very honest in dealing with the negative things that are in the world. The scripture our good Lord knows uh, is often filled with some things that are very difficult for us to, to fathom, that even the Son of God would be rejected, that his disciples would be rejected. So many things that seem to be wrong about life in the world back then and life in the world today. But our gospel lets us know that the goodness of God, the good news that is given to us outweighs the bad by far and overcomes that which is evil. There are negatives in our scripture this morning. If we go back and look at it, it says he was in the world talking about Christ, the word that had become flesh. And the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. What a tragedy that the one who, in whom we live and move and have our being, the one that loved us with such love as to create all of this for us to enjoy, uh, we did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. What a tragedy that here was the one who was greater than all, and yet when he came to us, the ones that he created, the ones that he loved, that he came to because of great love, he was rejected. He was not accepted. There are negatives, and the scripture acknowledges that. But then the scripture goes on to let us know that the positive so far outweighs the negative that we should not dwell on the negative. I know it's hard not to dwell on the negative. In our world around us, we're talking all the time about bad things happening. We talk about things that look like they are going to overcome all that is good. Uh, we have a pessimistic outlook so often. But the scripture reminds us that the Lord who created us, the Lord who loves us, is able to overcome all of these things. 
To all who received him, the scripture says, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. In other words, we in all our imperfections, we in all our sins, were loved by God and were called God's own children. The power of his love made us his own children and he excluded no one. All who would receive this gift, he, he freely gives it. And what a wonder of wonders uh, we find in this text. We mentioned last week that John's gospel does not tell about the birth of Jesus. The Christmas story in John's gospel is summed up in this one verse. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of a father's only son full of grace and truth. One sentence tells that great mystery of how God in his infinite love for us wanted and desired us to be his, to know him so much that he was willing even to come to us and become one of us, to take on human flesh, to take on human existence and all the problems that are attached with that. He loved us so much he was willing to take on our suffering, our disappointments, to live as we live, to know all that we endure, to face temptations even as we face them, and even to know pain and suffering and death. The Word became flesh and lived among us. But in becoming flesh and living among us, he made known to us just how great God's love really is and how full of grace he is toward us. We have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The power, the positive power of God's love cannot be overcome by the negatives. Jesus came into the world. He was not known. He was not received. And yet he did not give up on us. Our God is not a giving up God. Our God's love is so strong it does not let us go. His love is so strong that he gives us the power even to become his own children, members of his own family, forgiven of our sins and wrongdoings and made one with him. That is good news, exceedingly good news. And he gives us grace upon grace. He never promised that everything would be great in the world around us. He never promised that we would not suffer from sickness or from disappointment or from heartache or broken hearts. He never promised that life would be easy in this world. It wasn't easy for him. It is not easy for most people. But he did promise us that he would be with us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. He did promise us that even to the end of the age, he would be with us. And we have learned through the centuries of learning of him and walking with him, coming to know him better through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We have learned that even in the darkness, he gives light. Even in the deepest darkness, his light shines. There has been no place on earth that his light has not shone out for others to see if they would open their eyes to see it. Grace upon grace he gives to us. To the weak he offers strength. To those in despair he gives hope. 
To those in pain and suffering, he gives the prospect of one day, life in joy, life without pain, life without struggle. Maybe not in this world, maybe not in, in ways that we might think, but he offers to us grace that overcomes all the evil that there is, all the negative that there is around us. No one has ever seen God, John said. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This gift of God's love, the Word become flesh, it is a gift of us coming to know what God is like. If you want to know what God is like, who God really is, then look to Jesus. When you see Jesus, he reaches out to those who are outcast from society, and he loves and embraces them. He provides healing and life and love and hope and joy. If you want to see what God is really like, then you will see in Jesus compassion for all. If you want to see what God is really like, you will see in Jesus forgiveness that reaches to all kinds of sinners, forgiveness that draws people unto himself. If you want to see what God is like, then in looking at Jesus, you find one willing to give of himself for the sake of all the rest of us, self-giving love. He is close to the Father's heart, John says, and he has made God known to us. The good news of this new year is that God has loved us with an everlasting love that no matter what may come in this year, good or bad, no matter how difficult we might find life to be in this coming year, no matter if we even have to face death in this coming year, we can look to him and have hope and strength and joy because his love is a power that gives life even to the dead. God's love in this new year will sustain us and deliver us from all that is evil in the times when it seems that evil will overcome everything. His love will sti still, still sustain us and his love will win. And in time, his kingdom will come a kingdom in which there is love and justice and righteousness for all. Thanks be to God.
At the table of the Lord, we celebrate the greatest love that we've ever experienced, the love of God. We realize at this table that the greatest tragedy that ever happened in all of human history was the rejection of God's Son, the one through whom we were made, the one through whom the worlds came to be. And yet, in spite of that great tragedy, that great sin and evil on our part, the Lord still loved us. He invites us to this table as not as people who are outcast, but as people who are drawn into the arms of our God, as people who are loved. He invites us in, in spite of our sins, in spite of our failings, He offers us forgiveness and life. And so at this table, as we partake of bread and cup and remember what we did to him, how he suffered and died because of us and on our behalf, because of us, he loved us. In spite of us, he offers us forgiveness. In spite of us, he says, come to my table. Be a part of my family. And so we give thanks, and we celebrate one with another. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather at this table, we remember how we rejected and crucified you, but how our hostility toward you, our violence toward you, did not overcome your love. At this table, we remember how your love was more powerful than the power of death, And that you came back to us in resurrection with forgiveness and with love. As we partake of this bread and this cup, help us to truly repent of our sins. As we partake of this bread and this cup, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Cleanse us by your power and your love. And may your love grow in us and be shared one with another. Bind us together by the cords of that love. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we recall, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, He took bread, and when He had blessed it, He broke it. And He gave it to His disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in a like manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Drink you this and remember that Christ died for you, and be thankful. Let us pray. Lord, for your life, your body, your blood given for us, we give you thanks. For your love, which overcame death and offered us forgiveness and life, we give you thanks. Now may the power of your presence with us and in us transform us into all you want us to be. May the power of your love be shared with others. 
may they also be drawn unto you. We pray that as one family of God, we will glorify your name. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the Lord our Maker, be all honor and glory, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.